The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Whom should I dread? When those who do evil draw near, they stumble and fall. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Your spirit. Sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. O God, from whom all good things come, grant that we who call on you in our need may at your prompting discern what is right, and by your guidance do it. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So we listen attentively to God's word. <clears throat> so reading from the first book of Kings. At the mountain of God, Horeb, Elijah came to a cave where he took shelter. But the word of the Lord came to him, Go outside and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord will be passing by. A strong and heavy wind was rending the mountains and crushing rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, there was a tiny whispering sound. When he heard this, Elijah hid his face in his cloak and went and stood at the entrance of the cave. A voice said to him, Elijah, why are you here? He replied, I have been most zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, but the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to the sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. The Lord said to him, Go, take the road back to the desert near Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael as king of Aram. Then you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king of Israel, and Elisha, son of Shaphat of Abel Mechola, as prophet to succeed you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our response is, I long to see your face, O Lord. I long to see your face, O Lord. Hear, O Lord, the sound of my call. Have pity on me and answer me. Of you my heart speaks. You my glance seeks. I long to see your face, O Lord. Your presence, O Lord, I seek. Hide not your face from me. Do not in anger repel your servant. You are my helper, cast me not off. I long to see your face, O Lord. I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage, be stout-hearted, and wait for the Lord. I long to see your face, O Lord. We sing together. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, shine like lights in the world as you hold on to the word of life. Alleluia, 
Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said, You shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, Everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body thrown into Gehenna. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body go into Gehenna. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife must give her a bill of divorce. But I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, unless the marriage is unlawful, causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. The Gospel of the Lord. gospel. Free us from our sins. Amen. You know, if I could uh, summarize kind of the theme for the readings in my, in my heart and mind, it, it comes from that responsorial psalm. I long to see your face, O Lord. It's this longing for an encounter with the Lord. And sometimes this longing comes from a place of deep suffering and pain. Um, and this was the case in, with Elijah in the first reading. So let me set up the context because a few days ago we heard about the great exploit of Elijah. He was in kind of a contest with the prophets of Baal. And what they decided to do was set up a sacrifice and try to call down fire from heaven. And whose who, who's ever God could bring fire from heaven was the true God. So it was Elijah versus 450 prophets of Baal. And Elijah called upon God, fire came down from heaven. So obviously, he's a prophet serving the living God. But what happened as a result of that? I think he actually, he may have asked, you know, all the prophets, false prophets were killed. But then, Jezebel, the queen, who was uh, a worshiper of Baal, vowed. It's almost like she said, I'm not going to sleep, eat, or breathe until I cut off Elijah's head. So Elijah is actually on the run. He has been on the run from Jezebel. And before the reading today, we hear him actually telling God, oh my goodness, I'm tired. I just want to die. What is happening? You know? So in a sense, what I'm driving at is we long for this encounter, but sometimes we long for it from a place of deep suffering and pain that we have passed through and we're just kind of crying out, longing to see the face of God. And wonderfully, he has this encounter with God. <laughs> and something struck me in that reading because he went into a cave and he actually went to Horeb. This is like also Sinai. You know, it's this mountain where Moses met God. You know, and so he's looking for that place. You know, when we long to see God's face, we need to find that place of encounter. You know, so maybe some of you who are listening, you can think back to those places where you've encountered God. Because St. Ignatius of Loyola often recommends that in a time when we're passing through spiritual desolation, Sometimes it's important to go back 
to the last time you felt God's presence, to your last mountaintop experience, so that you can be near to this face that you may be missing at this particular time. You know, does that, I hope that makes sense, huh? So it's, it's important to go to that place. Where is your place of prayer and your place of encounter? And what is it that's making you cry out to God at this particular moment? Hmm? Um, I made a little summary of what we can do to encounter God. BLM. <laughs> it stands for, you know, many people think Black Lives Matter. Huh? That's true, absolutely. Uh, I'm using it as an acronym for be still. Be, be still. You know? Be still. We're always jumping around so much and we don't give space to hear God. So be still. Listen. Listen. So Elijah was able to be in the cave. He was still enough from his running. And he heard God say, go out of the cave. Stand by the mountain because the Lord will be passing by. So when we're still, we can listen to hear God's voice and then move. <laughs> move according to how God speaks to you and to your heart. Hmm? Um, so that's all I want to share. There's more I could share about that first reading, but let me leave it at that. Be still, listen, and move with the Spirit. <clears throat> um, with the gospel reading. <laughs> it's a very difficult reading sometimes when we first hear it, you know. I pluck out my eye, you know, uh, and it, in a culture here where most marriages, at least half of them, end in divorce, you know. This is going to be like, a <laughs> it may great people the wrong way, but, you know, we have to sort of contend and listen to the words of Jesus to us, you know? And I think at the heart of it, I, I, I talked to one of my Jesuit brothers once, and he mentioned that, you know, God is love and God is faithful. So these two things, you can remember the two L's, love and loyalty is part of the very character of God. And we who belong to him as his children are invited to live that love and that loyalty. You know, we, we, we reflect it in loving one another and not using, you know, or lusting after one another, you know. And loyalty, we reflect that in faithfulness to our commitments, you know. Faithfulness to our vows, you know, faithfulness in love and not, right, the opposite, which is breaking our commitments, breaking our families, you know. So I think that's really at the heart of it. And in the Sermon on the Mount and the Beatitudes, Jesus always wants us to go beyond just the action to What's the motivation? What's underlying, you know, our very heart and our intention? And it needs to reflect God, which is, who is love. Our primary intention should be love. Our primary intention should be this faithfulness, you know? And because we're all under construction, as Pope Francis says, we fall short but we, we, we need to seek the face of God to help heal what is broken and empower us to live this love and loyalty. I'm going to end with this. I was just part of a Zoom call and somebody made this statement which just caught my eye. He said, God is always ever in the moment. God is always ever in the moment. So we can always encounter God in this present moment. 
even if this moment is a time of suffering, God is always ever in the moment. We can endure, encounter, endure, right? God is always ever in the moment because he is love and because he's always loyal to us. He will never fail. Hmm? So now let's offer our prayers to the Lord. <clears throat> Let us adore Christ who offered himself to the Father through the Holy Spirit to cleanse us from the works of death. Let us adore him and call upon him with sincere hearts. And we will pray, in your will is our peace, Lord. In your will is our peace, Lord. From your generosity we have received this day. Grant us also the beginning of new life, we pray. In your will is our peace, Lord. You created all things and now you provide for their growth. May we always perceive your handiwork in creation, we pray. In your will is our peace, Lord. With your own blood, you ratify the new and eternal covenant. May we remain faithful to that covenant by following your precepts. We pray, in your will is our peace, Lord. On the cross, blood and water flowed from your side. May this saving stream wash away our sins and gladden the city of God. We pray, in your will is our peace, Lord. We take a moment <clears throat> to continue to remember uh, all those who have died, over 100,000 from the COVID-19 pandemic, all those who have died as a result of racial or racism or violence, war, hunger. May we be moved to be builders of a different kind of reign, a reign of kinship, a reign of justice, a reign of peace. We pray in your will is our peace, Lord. So take a moment of quiet now and offer your intentions, long for the face of God for this encounter. Father, be gracious to us, hear our humble prayer and open our hearts to a wonderful encounter with you. Give us the power to endure all that plagues us and bring us into your beautiful love and faithfulness. We ask this through Christ our Lord, amen. <clears throat> and as always, as we make our offerings, continue to remember our blessed sacrament community in your generosity, and we thank you for your gifts. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
he who humbled himself to share our own humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. It's the fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. And so please pray, my dear sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. <clears throat> Look kindly upon our service, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer may be an acceptable oblation to you, and lead us to grow in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one, by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Hosea, Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. At this Mass, we especially pray for the repose of Anthony Gonzalez. 
and uh, we pray for Marilu Ojeda, who passed away yesterday. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. So at our Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. You may offer one another a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. So we'll sing to eternal life. We long to see your face, O oh Lord. And so please join me in making this spiritual communion, inviting Jesus to dwell with us. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. God is love, and whoever abides in love abides in God, and God in him. We pray. May your healing work, O Lord, free us, we pray, from doing evil, and lead us to what is right. 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. We go forth in peace. Thanks be to God.